it's an honour to be opening this amazing TEDx event here in London today. My name is Max and our theme for the day is thinking out loud. So there's a real vulnerability and an authenticity in thinking out loud. So I want to approach this talk in a slightly different way to the way I would normally approach something like this. So I'm just going to share with you my story and share a concept that means a great deal to me and that I think can really help us all. So I wish to attack the concept that you're either an artist or a business person. Because I believe that in today's day and age, the two are intrinsically linked. And that creativity, innovation, and the courage to challenge conventional wisdom are some of the most important attributes we can have. So, I, uh, I started my career in the music industry, uh, playing in a band. I wanted to write and record music and play it to the world. And we did some really cool things. We toured all over the UK, we played gigs all over the world. We recorded albums in the UK and the US with Grammy award-winning producers. We played at some of the best festivals in the world. We released songs, we released albums, we released videos. We did some really cool things. And here you can see us at number four in the iTunes rock chart, sandwiched between James Blunt and John Lennon, of all people, on that particular week. So it's really cool. But the problem is, we never made any money. We could never turn it into a career. And I'm ambitious and driven and I want to succeed. And I started to think that the only way I could ever do that was to get a career. So that's what I did. So I got a job in marketing. And then I got a better job in marketing. And I started to climb the career ladder. But I wanted to create. I still wanted to create. I needed to create. So one day I went to the boss of the company that I was working for at the time, knocked on his door and I asked if we could turn the small two-man department that I was part of into its own separate brand, into a business within a business. And to my astonishment, he said yes. And I shat myself. Because I'm an artist, not a business person. I have a vision, but how can I possibly execute? So I did the only thing that I really thought I could, and I read books. I read every single business book I could possibly get my hands on, from old business classics all the way through to the modern forefathers of modern business philosophy, like Seth Godin, Malcolm Gladwell, Tim Ferriss, that sort of people. And what happened over the next few years astonished even me. You see, we managed to turn this small two-man department into a brand that employed over 30 people. As was said before, we grew 800% year on year and turned it into an enterprise that generates many, many millions of pounds of revenue every year. But at this point, I couldn't help but step back and think to myself, well, what am I? Am I an artist or am I a business person? Artist or business person? And I've come to the conclusion that I am both. But previously, I was thinking like an artist only. But what happened over the last few years, from the books I read and my experience in business, I never stopped thinking like an artist, but I started to think like an artist and a business person. I started to think like an entrepreneur. And do you know the most powerful, the most significant realisation that I came to over the last few years? More significant than the words I read in the books or the skills that I picked up from running a business. The most important reala realisation I had was that creativity and the desire to create art are two of the most important assets you can have in business. But we're not taught that. You see, if I think back, the reason we never really made it in the band, the reason we couldn't take it further, is because we were thinking like artists only. Had we thought like artists and business people, had we brought the two together and thought like entrepreneurs and treated the band like a startup, found a niche, built a thousand true fans, tested different monetization models, and built a sustainable engine of growth. We could have turned it into something special, but we were thinking like artists only. We were thinking like cogs. 
We were the cog of artists and we needed to find the cog of business people to help us flourish into the music industry. Now, 30 years or so ago, that may have been the only way you could do it. But you no longer need a record deal to make it in the music industry. Not if, not if you think like artist and business person, not if you think like an entrepreneur. But we never did. Because to us, there was this huge disconnect between the term artist and the term business person. We didn't bring the two together. It wasn't that we didn't have the talent to think like business people, because we had the creativity. We had the desire to create art, but we were thinking like artists only. And it's this disconnect between the term artist and between the term business person that I really want to dig into today, because I think it's so important. Now, in my opinion, there are two reasons that there's this disconnect between the term artist and between the term business person. The first is our lizard brain. So this is the brain that makes us want to put everything into a category, to put a label on everything, to box everything up, to understand it, because this helps us to identify what pack we belong to. It's safety in numbers, it's a survival mechanism, and it's laziness of social thought, because we want to put everything into the filing cabinet in our brain so we can process it and understand it easily. But the second reason that there's this disconnect between the term artist and the term business person is slightly more worrying. Because the second reason has been manufactured by modern society, by us. And it's all about the system that we enter into from our earliest days that encourages us to have a role and play a function. It encourages us to think like artist or business person. And the thing is, this system is designed from the ground up to feed human labour into the engine of industry. It's designed and, and has its roots in the Industrial Revolution, a time when we are promised security and certainty in exchange for playing a role and having a function. We are taught from our earliest, most impressionable years to think like cogs in a machine. And the thing is, this system hasn't changed whether it's a factory or a blue chip company, whether it's a conveyor belt or a cubicle with a PC, we're taught to have a role, we're encouraged to have a function, and we're taught to think like cogs. The problem is, this fundamentally stifles our ability to think like both artist and business person. It fundamentally stifles our ability to think like entrepreneurs. And the thing is, I know it's easy to say here, yes, yes, the system, but what about physiology? We're either left-brained or right-brained. Popular culture would have us believe that those who are logical, analytical, and methodical are left-brained dominant. And those of us who are creative and artsy are right-brained dominant. Now, it may or may not surprise you guys and girls to know that this is actually completely farcical. It's a myth. There is absolutely no scientific proof to back this up whatsoever. On the contrary, there was an experiment done by the University of Utah where they took 1,000 participants between the ages of 7 and 29. And this experiment took two years to undertake. And they scanned the participants, neurologists scanned the participants to measure functional lateralization. Now, functional lateralization is essentially just a fancy way of saying they were measuring the mental processes on either side of the brain. Now, while it's absolutely conclusive, no one is denying that the left hemisphere is responsible for certain actions and the right hemisphere is responsible for others. What this particular experiment proved conclusively was that no one is left or right brain dominant. No one has a dominant side, left or right. We are holistic thinkers. We use both the left and the right side pretty much equally. And this whole thing about being left-brained or right-brained is just another example of how we're taught to have a role and a function. We're left-brained, we're right-brained, we're artists, we're a business person. We're taught to play a role, we're taught to have a function, and we're taught to think like cogs. Now, many years ago, thinking like cogs in industry maybe would have got us somewhere. But now, we are being taught to think like cogs in a machine that no longer needs cogs. The 21st century has seen a monumental shift in the world of business. 
Traditional industries have been shaken and disrupted to their very core by startups, entrepreneurs and creators that seem to spring as if from nowhere. Technology and the internet has changed everything. The world's information is available in the palm of our hand in an instant. Any job that involves human labour is slowly and surely being replaced by machines and artificial intelligence is a reality. We no longer need cogs. We need entrepreneurs. And that is why we must attack the concept that you're either an artist or a business person because great entrepreneurs are both. Great entrepreneurs are creators, innovators, problem solvers, prepared to think differently and challenge conventional wisdom. Great entrepreneurs create art. The Industrial Revolution is over. The technology revolution is moving and evolving at a rate so fast we can't possibly keep a grip of it. We are entering the era of the entrepreneur. This is the entrepreneur revolution. We live in a time of extreme uncertainty, so finding new ways of doing things is absolutely integral. Creativity, innovation, problem solving, these are integral skills and these are entrepreneurial skills. These are the skills we need to unbox and these are the skills we need to be instilling in our children. The adults of the future who are growing up into this world of uncertainty. We must attack the concept that we're artist or business person and just drop the labels. Because great art doesn't necessarily mean music or painting. Great art, no matter what your industry, is about vision and creativity and problem solving and the courage to challenge conventional wisdom. And business is not just about numbers and briefcases. Business is about value and purpose and execution. And if I take this all the way back to my days in the band, had we broken down the barriers, had we thought like artists and business people, we could have done something so much better than we actually did. But that barrier existed because you no longer need a record deal to make it in the music industry. And similarly, you no longer need a huge warehouse, a factory, loads of machinery, or a huge amount of capital investment to start a business. The barrier to entry has been removed. You can turn your art and your passion, whatever that may be, into your career if you are prepared to think like an artist and a business person, if you think like an entrepreneur. I was interviewing someone on my podcast the other day and we were laughing about an old meme. An old meme that states, I know I'm told I should turn my passion into my career, but I don't see anyone paying me to watch football. Understandable. But try telling that to the founders of Copa 90, which is a highly popular football YouTube channel that's now worth over $25 million. Everything has changed. But I am not saying to be a great artist, to be a great business person, to be a great entrepreneur, you have to start a company or be a founder. Absolutely not. But what I am saying is the greatest companies to be a part of today are the ones that understand that entrepreneurship is required throughout the organisation, from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top. Some people call this being an intrapreneur. I think that's silly. It's just being an entrepreneur. Because to be an entrepreneur is to undertake, to have vision to think differently and to execute. Industries are being disrupted left, right and centre, so entrepreneurship is required in business, in companies. A great example of this is Match.com. So they've been in the, uh, in the dating game for many years. They were there and then suddenly, out of nowhere, up comes Tinder. Now, hands up if you think that Match.com are worried about Tinder disrupting their industry. Hands up if you think they are. Okay. It's exactly what I thought a few months ago, until I found out that Match.com invented Tinder. No joke, they founded Tinder, they created Tinder, they disrupted their own industry. And this just goes to show how great entrepreneurship is required throughout. We must break down the barriers, we must unbox these labels, we must stop thinking like cogs, and we must start thinking like artists and business people, we must start thinking like entrepreneurs, no matter what our calling. 
And to bring you up to date in my journey, I recently set up a company called Rebelhead Entrepreneurs. And we exist to bridge this gap, to close the disconnect between artist and business person, and to celebrate modern entrepreneurship. So through our content, through engaging podcasts and interviews, and articles and videos and tutorials and courses, we aim to inspire and motivate and support creative entrepreneurs of today. And we are so very passionate about this that our mission is to help one million creative entrepreneurs by 2020. We really must just break down these barriers, look at what's happening in the world, attack the concept that you're either an artist or a business person and think like entrepreneurs. Thank you so much for listening to me. It really has been an honour. Um, if there's one thing I can leave you with, it's just go forth, create art. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you very much.